We've looked at what makes for an effective or a well-designed email campaign and what makes for a badly designed email campaign. So let's dive into MailChimp and create our email campaign. The first thing to, to mention, to notice, is that we have the word templates in the top menu. Campaigns is where we create our marketing activity, or, you know, uh, email campaign, uh, landing page, whatever. But a template is actually historically related to email marketing in MailChimp. Most of my clients find it far more effective than using templates to create their first campaign to their branding needs and so on. And then in the future, just copy that campaign and just change what they need to. Very, very quick and simple process that works really well. So I'll do it that way. If we click on campaigns, we can then click create campaign. We then have the option of what type of marketing activity campaign do we want to do? We want to do email. Then we have four types of email campaigns we can create, regular, automated, plain text, and oh, sorry, or A-B test. So regular is to our entire audience at the same time. Automated is the clever stuff. It's often called drip marketing. If someone subscribes, then send them this email immediately. Two days later, send them that and so on. And I'll, I'll show that in a separate video. Plain text is where uh, there's no images, for example. And A-B test is if you have more than, let's say, 50,000 subscribers, we can test what happens. If we use this subject line, what are the results like, as opposed to if we use that subject line and so on. But let's create a regular campaign for now. We can call it anything we want to. I'll just call this, um, I don't know, Feb 2019. It's for my own housekeeping purposes, so I can call this campaign anything I want to. So begin. I'm now in the campaign builder. I start at the top and I work down. So who do I want to send this campaign to? I'm gonna click add recipients. I need to select my list. So I mentioned this before, we can only send to a list or a segment or tags of a list. We cannot send to multiple lists. We could of course um, select a, pre, a segment we've created in the past, or we could even select our re recipients via a, a search at this stage or via a tag, but I'll send to all subscribers. We should get in the habit, if you do have, for example, people's first names, of, of clicking the personalize the to field and selecting F name. This is not in the body of the text itself, such as high first name, it's not. It's in the header of the email. So I'm going to click save. I've set who I'm going to send to. The from, I set up the defaults when I set up my list, but at this stage I could change uh, these details, but I'll leave them as, as is, so I'll click save. So we've done two from subject line. What makes for a good subject line? Typically, a good subject line is short-ish, sharp, sweet, and it reflects the first story or the first item in the email campaign. So typically the benefit of the person opening and reading the campaign. So there needs to be consistency between the subject line and the first story because the first story is what people see. But the subject line um, correlates very strongly to whether people will actually open and read your email or not. Uh, so it, 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 it also shouldn't look spammy and we all know what that looks like, you know, uppercase discount and so on. It just doesn't work. So we need to make something that's um, reflective of the content we'll have. So um, do you need a new coat for your pet? I don't know, something like that. If you really want to, you can include emojis, but please don't use emojis in place of um, a word because some email readers don't show emojis. The preview text, some email readers show uh, a preview. In other words, the first few lines of the email itself, but this is a way that we can control what is shown. So we could go here, um, we have new dog codes in stock. 
It's amazing I haven't uh, had a spelling error so far. Things are going well. And I'll click save. Okay. To, from, subject, right. Let's get down to the nitty gritty and actually create our email. Last video, I showed you a few different uh, good email layouts, uh, Adobe, Uber, so on. And all of them had something similar to this. Logo, image, heading, text, button. And of course, I mentioned that if we're doing a newsletter, for example, we might just repeat these again. So image, heading, text, button, image, heading, text, button, image, heading, heading text, button, sorry, and so on. So let's, let's, let's create this. So I'm going to click design email. At this stage, I could get someone to code or, or, or I could myself code a template. I could copy a pass in campaign, but I'll show you a, a quicker way of doing this um, after we've sent this one. If I have saved templates, I could use those. I could use one of the supplied themes. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use one of the MailChimp layouts. These layouts are brilliant. They look good on most devices. Uh, they're responsive, so small screen devices work really well. I highly recommend them. I'm just going to choose this one column. Um, this is just like the Disney one we saw, the Adobe one, and so on. They use something very similar, if you look at this, not full width and so on. And I'll, I'll just click it just to use it for our example. So I've just clicked it to use it for our layout. On the left-hand side of the screen, what we're seeing here is, uh, is Mail MailChimp is, sorry, adding what we call content blocks. And in this section, we're going to add our content and design our email itself. So everything is just built with blocks. If we want text, we add a text block. So the blocks are on the right hand side. We can drag and drop blocks and so on. Or we could move these blocks that are already on the screen on the left hand side up and down. We could delete them. We can duplicate them or we could even edit them. In the future, as I mentioned, we're going to just copy this. So it'll be nice and quick and simple. But for the first time, if you have specific branding guidelines, we need to click design. So on the right hand side, we click design. So for example, let's say that um, your branding guidelines say that you need to be using Times New Roman body text. I just know from experience that under body, if I scroll down, I can find body text and the font you can see there at this time is Arial. I could change this to Times New Roman, for example, and you can see it changes it. But I'll, I'll just change it back for now. So best practice is to go through, or if you do have specific um, branding guidelines, come into design and click on each of these and go through them. Just a word about using fonts in your email campaigns. I mentioned in the last video that standards were set in uh, 1997, a long, long time ago. And actually, the standards weren't really that well set because it left it up to the to the uh, so the reading software to determine how things displayed. What that what that means is that we've reached the stage where we can't use those fancy fonts, what we call web fonts that we use on our websites. It just doesn't; they do not display consistently uh, between devices. So we need to use what are called the web safe fonts. That is the safest option, and Mailchimp provides various uh, standard web fonts. Helvetica, Tahoma, etc., etc. But we could also, if, if we want to, use some of the very popular Google uh, Google fonts, Arvo, and so on, because they're just so widely used. But we can't use those fancy ones that we use specifically for our websites in most uh, circumstances. Not a Mailchimp thing; it's a standards thing. This uh, at the bottom of the screen, I have something that says Monkey Rewards. If I'm on a free account with MailChimp, uh, MailChimp insert their logo at the bottom, but we have a choice of what logo or badge we want to show. If you're on a paid account, you don't have to show it. Okay, let's stop talking and let's dive in. Well, I'll keep talking. Let's dive straight into our uh, designing our email campaign. I'm just going to go back to the design. So we're going to do this logo, image, heading, text, button. Easy, easy, easy. A logo is an image. 
So to edit this block called logo, and, and your logo might already show there, but I'm going to just click on the block, and immediately on the right hand side, I can adjust the content. So I can click replace, and I've gone through the content manager in a previous video. I could just click on my logo and click insert. Really, really quick and simple. With all images, please make sure that they're at least at least 600 pixels wide. It will prevent distorting of your, your images. Please don't make your images less than 600 pixels wide. Also, file types for images. Uh, again, to try and ensure consistency, the best file types to use for your images are PNG, GIF, GIF, or JPEG slash uh, JPG the most most widely accepted for all images that we add we should also get in the habit of adding a link so that if someone clicks on on the image uh, they go back to our website or wherever you want them to go and we should always get in the habit of clicking alt and describing in words what that image is about this shows when images don't show for people and also if people are using a screen reader it really is important to do this. So I could just put something like logo in here. Save and close. That was nice and simple. Just looking at the layout I want to do, the next thing I said is an image. We can look at the various kinds of content or content blocks that MailChimp gives us. And I can just drag whichever I want across. So for this, this example, I'll just drag and drop this nice one image block across. Drag it wherever I want it. And MailChimp immediately says to me, upload an image. So I click Browse. In this circumstance, I'll just use our mate here, our, our, our Labrador, I think it is, and click Insert. Really quick and simple. Again, I would add a link. Add some alt text. And there we go. Really, really simple. I then mentioned heading and text, so let's do that. This block here is obviously example content, uh, demo content given by MailChimp because I'm using one of their layouts, but it's the same as the text content block. So if it weren't here, I could drag and drop my text content block across. So I'm going to click on that block to edit it. And I can just add a heading. Um, and I could add some text. Um, you'd add a bit more text. And, ah, oh, gee, am I spelling mistakes? So um, I'll start in. Of course, as I've mentioned a few times before, we don't put, or typically we don't put the entire content on in an email campaign. What we do is we give a teaser and then the person can go somewhere else to, to read that content. The sale or the conversion happens somewhere else, on a website typically, something like that. Um, and once we go into reports, this will make more sense because it really helps us know what people are clicking on, therefore what they're reading, what they're interested in. Because we as the sender, we often, unfortunately, don't know exactly what our consumers want, and this is, and we'll see when we get reports um, how important it is to have have links that people can click on. So I'm in the image editor. What I can do at this stage is I could add a hyperlink, for example, and to add a hyperlink, in other words, where people can click to go somewhere else. I quite simply highlight the words I want to be the actual hyperlink, click the, the link icon, and I can type in my web address, for example, and insert. There we go. I could also go something like um, email us now. And I can even pre-set out an, a message that will pop up with the content already done uh, 
for the person when they click on it. So I would just highlight my words again, email us now, and they could be any words. Click the link icon, change the link to to be email address, and I would add my email address here. I would then add a subject and I could even put in the message body. So what happens, and I'll just click insert. So what happens now is when um, your recipient clicks email us now, it'll pop up in their email reader and or writer, and it'll have the, the message ready just to send to you. Let's talk about attachments. So in MailChimp, we can't send an attachment per se. What we can do is send a link to a file. This makes a lot of sense. Because when we look at our reporting, we'll talk about it a little bit, and um, many organizations might see, let's say, 20% open rate. So 20% of people might be interested in actually reading their content. 10% of that might be then interested in actually seeing or clicking a link, for example. So let's say you've got 100,000 people, 20% of that is 20,000, 10% of the 20,000 is 2,000. So. We then sending 98,000 copies of an attachment that no one wants. So it's far more effective to say to people, we're not going to force you to download this, but when you're ready, click on this and it'll open up in your screen for you. So the way we do an attach attachment then is this. We'd go, let's say, download now. Highlight the words. Click the link button. Change the web address to be file. And MailChimp immediately says to me, what file do I do I want to be the, the pseudo attachment? I'll upload one from my computer. So I've clicked upload and I'm just going to find a demo file um, and I'm going to click open. Now, the type of files you, you can use are, you know, the very common, all, all the common ones, Word, PDF, Excel, uh, CSV, TXT, and so on. So I'll click, and I'll click insert. And now, when someone clicks download now, it'll download at that stage and open up for the per person. So if you've got spec sheets, if you know, or, or you've got forms you need to distribute and so on, you can do it this way. That word forms. Let's talk about that very quickly. We can't reliably, I should say, embed forms into emails. Again, this is not a MailChimp thing. This is a standards thing. A lot of email readers just cannot handle form fields. So unfortunately, the best thing to do if you need forms is, is link to a form some, on another website or send it in a PDF file or something like that. Okay, so there's various things we can do in this text editor and most of us are familiar. One thing to know, however, is, is if you're copying and pasting to email anyway from Word, Word is not HTML. Even if you save it as HTML, there's a lot of sort of, let's call it rubbish that gets saved in the, uh, the Microsoft HTML version. We can do this. We can copy our content if we're doing it from Word. We can copy from Microsoft Word, click the paste from rich text editor, paste the content into here from Word and click OK. Unfortunately, that doesn't always work because of all that nonsense that's included with Word. The best thing that my clients tend to do is, well, well, first of all, you shouldn't really need to copy and paste from Word because you just want a few lines here anyway, so you can just type it out. But secondly, paste it into a notepad or some sort of you know, basic text editor, which will strip out all the nonsense and then paste into, into um, MailChimp. If you use Google Docs, you're in luck. That's pure HTML. You'll be able to copy and paste directly from Google Docs into MailChimp because it's HTML. Okay. Save and close. So, logo, image, heading, text. It's add a button. Ah, oh, fantastic. If I scroll down, MailChimp has a button already for me. I'll just drag and drop that wherever I want it. So I'm just going to drop it. And on the right hand side, I can set, you know, I can do the style, the content. So I could do read more, for example. I could put any words I want to. I could link to, and again, this could be a web address. It could be an email or whatever. I could click on style. And let's say I wanted to change the color. I could click here. 
and let's just play with the color a little bit and let's say I wanted the button that color I could have it with you might even have specific uh, hex or RGB color codes you want to use so you can change the style we could even go into settings and do we want it to be aligned to the left to the right uh, do we want it full width or not and I'll, I'll just take this back to center so you can play with that in your own time so the video the previous video Adobe Disney etc we're using this exact layout logo image header text button and of course we could just repeat this going down and we have various other things we could add a divider we could do various things so that's that's nice and simple right at the bottom this section at the bottom is called the footer content block this contains the unsubscribe link and so on and where you see this funny stuff the stars with current year and so on MailChimp will autofill it for you most people you just do not need to touch this MailChimp will do it for you unless you you have very specific needs that you know of um, if you do remove this MailChimp will either not let you send the email because your unsubscribe link and so on isn't there or uh, MailChimp will just add it for you anyway so all this will get filled for you so so you typically don't need to worry about that there are various social uh, sharing buttons and social follow. Now I'll describe the, the difference. Social share is the recipient can share the email to there, the recipients, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever you select. Social follow is we, we as the sender, we add links to our Facebook, to our website and so on. Nice and easy. I'm just going to add a few other things here. Now, the first thing to say is that if you have an e-commerce store, you could add products or recommendations directly into your email but let's look at video best practice is not to add to upload video to mailchimp and then include it in our email what we do is we add a video content block and we link to an online version of the video so for example this is vimeo um, it could be youtube another um, video service provider. What we do is we upload our, our videos to Vimeo, YouTube, etc. And then we link to it in our email. So let's say this is my video or one that I want to link to. I start watching it in YouTube or whatever. Just copy the hyperlink of the video itself. Come back to MailChimp. Drag and drop the video content block wherever I want the video to show. MailChimp immediately says to me, what is the URL? So I'll paste in that URL that I copied from Vimeo or YouTube in this circumstance. And Mail MailChimp brings the, um, the thumbnail through for me. If you want to replace the thumbnail, you can always just replace it. We could also change the text. Um, and again, we can click on style. We could change the background card at the bottom. We could change various things. You could even come to settings and say, I want the caption on the top. And you can play with various different settings in your own leisure. But that's how we um, add video. So what happens now is when you send it, the recipient gets the video, they click on the video and it'll display for them in the Vimeo app or maybe um, the YouTube app or their browser or something like that. So that's how we include video nice and easy one more thing on images let me add another image I'm going to add a large image so I'm just going to drag and drop and there are various image content blocks you can use such as if you wanted a caption to the side you would use that and so on but let me just just for this demo let me just add another image MailChimp says to me what image do I want to upload so I'll click browse I'm just going to upload one from my computer I'll just wait for it to upload it is a very big image so it will take um, a second or two have a drink of water in the meantime you don't have to that's just me right it's it's big um i mentioned earlier you know between 600 and 1200 pixels wide so mailchimp says to us this image you'll see there is 3543 white so it's huge very slow to load for people. This image is so big it may obliterate inboxes. 
images should be around 800 to 1200 pixels wide let's fix it so we click let's fix it so we want to reduce the size of it the image editor which I covered earlier opens up and MailChimp is kind enough to immediately reduce the size for us so remember it was 3500 whatever it's reduced it down to 1200 so to accept that we click save and there we go in a second or two it there we go it saves it at 1200 pixels wide so it's reduced the size so really really simple to to reduce the size where it is too big I'm just going to delete this for now so it almost looks like we're ready but this is a good time to to break and I'll carry on with this campaign in the next video so please join me then